Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, J.I. Colorist. My name is Jody, and we are excited to have you here. Today for week nine, we are doing a page a week. Um, we may have to step it up in November and December to get through this. This is a book called Festive Coloring, purchased off of Book Outlet, and it features 24 advent windows to color. The name of the illustrator is in the video description and let's get started we are like i said on week nine today is storefront is bluebell hair salon and this is what it looks like there is lots of uh pro hair type products in the windows and uh, again lots of different uh kind of uh scandinavian type designs on the outside of the buildings Today, instead of using distressed crayons or gelatos, I am going to switch it up a little bit and do the background with ink. I am not super uh, great at ink, so uh, we will be doing a little bit of practicing along the way. I have three colors. They are all Ranger. Uh, some are archival ink. They are all permanent and waterproof. I have Cobalt, Mermaid Lagoon, and faded jeans. And so I'm thinking that the background of the salon would be blue um, because it's Bluebell's hair salon. So I'm just kind of obviously thinking, start with the background of blue. Uh, I will just go over all of the areas minus the windows, of course. And then I will um, come in with gel pens or paint or something else to go over all of the details afterwards. There isn't a lot of actual festive coloring on this one so um, that's kind of uh, nice all right so this is what the outside of the uh, the storefront that we're doing it is number nine the inside of it is a fully operating salon and uh, so that's kind of fun as well but we will not be focusing on this but you're welcome to color whichever page you want of course uh, if you have completed any of the pages uh, with the numbers on them please uh, consider sending them in and I will feature them on future videos plus in December with the uh, full uh, book flip through and you can email them to jicolorist at gmail.com I'll adjust the lights a little bit more and uh, I will go ahead and start. I'm going to do a little bit of taping off. So just using some washi tape and getting it a little less sticky. And I'm just going to put it down. Now I have also been doing uh, quite a bit of coloring now. So we're getting some bumps and ridges from underneath. So I am going to uh, increase the number of papers that I put behind these pages. It's just some old washi tape I have, so might as well use it up. So besides the washi tape, I will still uh, go ahead and use my typical sticky notes. And I'm going to use a domed uh, foam this time. And so again, these were the three colors I had. Um, cobalt is probably the middle color of the two. The Mermaid Lagoon, um, since it is a bluebell, um, that might be easier to go over with other colors. So maybe I'll stick with that and I will use Mermaid Lagoon by Ranger. And it is archival, acid-free, permanent, waterproof ink. It is just a square pad. I am going to ink up my foam roller. And I'm gonna put a bunch of paper, like I said, behind. Since I'm not an expert at inking, I am going to start some trivia as you see me uh, do a little bit of inking on screen. The first question is, what is the sum of the three angles of a triangle? And that's a little bit uh, of a math question, so let me think about that. So I start off on the sides and I come in. Now, just have to make sure that you've got your paper all the way. I am going to guess that the sum of the three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees because that would be half a circle and the answer is 
180 degrees. Okay, I think that's a pretty color. And I'll go off and do some more masking. And I'll finish off the inking process and we'll be back. We'll do some of the windows uh, together today and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this page turns out. Trivia question number two. What quote do we associate with Uncle Sam? And I think it's, I want you, and it's a drafting quote. That's my answer. And it is, I want you. Wow, that was a lucky guess. Okay, I have finished the inking and I just thought I'd bring you back before I go and wash my hands. It doesn't matter what I do. I seem to um, get right into uh, my uh, <laughs> creative endeavors. So this is what the page is looking like. It is uh, not super saturated, which is good because I don't want to saturate too much ink. Uh, I don't want it to bleed through the paper, um, but I am happy with the overall coverage. I think I will be able to still go over. I can still see all the designs, go over them with gel pen or uh, colored pencil and stuff like that. I'll go ahead and remove uh, the rest of the tape and pick out some other colors. But now that I have a base color, I can go and use my uh, color catalog to look up some color palettes if I want, or I can just wing it. So uh, that's uh, where I've started so far. And I'll go clean up. And this is what my domed foam roller looks like now. Um, I may, there's probably a little bit of ink left on here, so I may go and quickly rub it off on another page in another book just to use up that bit of ink. And uh, yeah, so there's the inking. I'm not an expert on inking, but um, so it's not as smooth as say a gelato background, but I still think for the outside of a building, it's uh, just fine. All right, I'll see you back here shortly. I have, let the ink dry. I have picked a palette. We are going to go with palette number 15 and that's just because I wanted some bright fun colors to go along with the blue. I have started with the color sage which is uh, this color up top. So the colors on the palette number 15 are sage, sky blue, raspberry, salmon pink, and forest green. So I've selected the sage color to do all of the little sprigs on the page and they're just slightly uh, sparkly and then I have started also to do some of the inside of the windows and I'm using the same color light angle 220 as I did on this page here. I'm going to finish off this one right here and we will get to work on this uh, window. Now, I'm thinking that maybe I want to do this top. I could either just fill it in uh, with this light indigo too, but it kind of would look nice if this was a little bit stained glass-like, so I may decide to do some of that. So I'm trying to keep these colors in mind when I'm thinking of this stained glass. There's also a lot of products in the window and some of them uh, would be like glass bottles so I plan to use some glaze pens for that. Haven't decided what color to do this um, so I've left that uh, blank but I think I am going to go ahead and at least fill in with the light indigo 220 so that's the soft brush pit pen and uh, fill in just these uh, the windows themselves so that the background is already uh, completed and then I can also shade later or add some light highlights at some point, but I'll quickly do that because that's not exciting to watch. And uh, then we'll get back to doing something together. Okay, just thought I'd bring you quickly up to date on where we're at. And I will also uh, drop the camera. Now that you've seen the whole page outline, I'll drop the camera and next time you come back, uh, we'll be zoomed in. Okay, we are going to start off with some of these items over here. And I'm starting off uh, with the easy items, which are the scissors. And uh, I'm making them silver with silver pop gel pen. 
Trivia question number three. We all know that the Hindenburg caught fire, but what was the Hindenburg? And I'm going to say it was a flying balloon. The correct answer is airship slash zeppelin. Very juicy, so I think I won't be using that one again. So I hope everyone is having a good week. I hope you've got your coloring book out and you're coloring along with me in either this book or whichever book you're working on. Hope you're spending the next half hour just relaxing and having a bit of fun. It is currently uh, Monday of the week and it is our, having our very first snowfall of the year. This is a Pit Artist Pen in Cold Gray 4. Trivia question number four. How do you say astronaut in Russian? And that should be cosmonaut. And the answer is cosmonaut. And then I think I'm going to make this uh, a fun color. So we'll let that dry and then I might bring in the, one of the reds or something to give that a bit of color. Now I have decided for this window here I'm going to make it a uh, going to use the blue glaze and so I'll do that and I'm going to do that now so it has time to uh, dry. Trivia card number two, question one. What are Seabiscuit, Black Beauty, and Shadow Facts? And I believe they should all be horses. And the answer is horses. Excellent start. Okay, so that's what that's going to look like. I'll bring you back when I have finished all four panes. I'll wait for that to dry and then I'm going to use a gel pen to do the crossbars or the but that's how it's going to look. Okay, see you back shortly. While I have the blue glaze pen out, I have decided to also make the number nine in the uh, bottom window. I'm going to make that also stained glass so it matches. So just zoom you out and you can see top and then that as well. Okay I have selected uh, the colors for the window casing and I am using uh, peony pink from the Spectrum North Sparkle pens and then I'm using for underneath the darker casing I'm using magenta 133 Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen. So I will do the same to this one over here and just shaking it up and there is also a cross bar across this window. So it looks like this window probably opens. So I will do that in the magenta as well. Trivia question number two. What is a sound too low pitched for humans to hear called? So this is quite liquidy. So I'm just putting it on. And then if I need to come back after it's dried for a second coat, uh, then I'll do that. Um, but it's best to wait for it to dry so that it's not saturating the paper. This is such a big book, but I think I've finally, after nine weeks, getting used to a few workarounds. Make sure I'm in frame while filming. Question to answer, what is the sound too low pitched for humans to hear called? I had no guess, but the sound is infrasound. Interesting. Okay, just to let you know, I finished off the top of the uh, window with the crossbars with the Jelly Roll Metallic and it is kind of a purpley pink. So that's how that's looking. And it definitely looks like a window, which is awesome. So we will leave that to dry and I do like the other colors. They're coming together nicely. So I think I will uh, scoot down 
and continue those colors here and then we will come back and do a bunch of this items that are inside the actual windows and then we also have all these decorative items on the outside okay just catching you up on some of the progress that I have been making um, and then we will begin doing some of the insides I did the one face on this side we'll do this one together I used an Artex acrylic marker uh, there's no name or numbers on this but it's kind of a flesh tone um, and I first tried to use colored pencil to go over the blue and it was uh, not showing up enough so again I pulled out the acrylic marker because it is more opaque and it was able to give me a flesh tone so that's what I used there then I used three different browns in the Stedler pigment brush pen to do the hair and that's how that looked I liked this right here I thought that that looked pretty sharp so I decided to do the door so I did the door wood and then I took and took the same gel pen that I used up top and I put some uh, I put a frame inside the window uh, so that I could make it glass as well and then I did the same blue glaze and so the glass here matches the glass up top I thought that kind of tied the door in nicely the window here did not have that cross in the middle before but I thought that uh, the window pane looked a little bare so I thought that would add a nice touch so that's where we are right now I will uh, finish off the glaze pen for this window let it dry and then I'll be back to work on some of these smaller items together I've just been doing a few of the tools of the hairdresser's trade uh, in the window so far but uh, we'll get a bit more done together shortly okay let me finish off this door right here a little catch up on what I have done so far I have completed the comb and brush station here and I have brought in the polychromos alizarin crimson for the brushes and that's so that you could still see the black bristles that are there if I had used the blue or the uh, black you would have not seen those details anymore so I brought in a color that hasn't been used very much of yet and that is this uh, raspberry color here I also have been using the uh, pit pen cobalt blue 143 I did some of the uh, combs in that and then I brought in a black pit pen 199 for the rest of that in the rest of the page I'll just zoom you back out I have used the cobalt blue which is a similar color to this in the dots that are sprinkled around here really happy with how I did the panes in this window here and adding those crossbars I think it uh, really looks good and now I'm ready to do the background of the main signage area I wanted to do a nice smooth background and I do that best with uh, gelatos so I've gone and pulled out two different pinks I have a strawberry and I have a lavender and then I'm kind of looking at my page I also brought out the this color here which was the peony color and swatched it beside the two because I want the colors to still go together and I think I'm going to go with the brighter pink uh, just to add a bit of a zip to the page and uh, that still matches my color palette so just using my uh, little bit of Tim Holtz media mat I'm going to rub the color and it is called lavender onto that and I'm going to dry brush this area here then I'll come back in and do you'll still be able to see through which is important because I want to be able to do the bluebell hair salon in a blue color that's what I'm going to do right now and then I'm going to uh, come and we're going to do some of these bottle areas here I want them to look like glass and uh, so we're gonna make that happen I'm going to dry brush and I have taped off this area already just in preparation it'll go a little faster if I've got it taped off then I don't have to keep repositioning my sticky notes trivia question number three 
A CEO is the director of a company. What does the acronym CEO stand for? <clears throat> okay, this is how it's looking. And uh, it is so much easier to use this than ink. And I'm sure that if I used ink as many times as I used gelatos, I probably would be getting more proficient at it. But the um, gelatos, you can still uh, move around once it's down where the ink pretty much sinks right into the paper right away. And uh, I can smooth the gelato out. It will dry permanent. I must say, I think it's probably my favorite. You can make it darker in areas if you need to bring it in more or keep it light. You can mix the colors as well. Like if I, um, you can mix them on the palette that uh, works best rather than on the paper itself, but you can do a little bit of mixing. Comment below if you uh, use gelatos in your coloring books and if there's a different way that you apply them than I apply them because um, I am always open to learning new techniques. Okay, let me uh, gently peel this off. And I got a little close. So there's a little bit of a line here. So I'm just going to reposition this uh, tape and do a little bit more blending there to get rid of that. I could come in with a color pencil, but um, it's probably best just to fix that right now. The answer to trivia question number three CEO should stand for Chief Executive Officer, and I'll check the back, and that is correct. There we go. Better. I'll let that dry, and we will continue on with the rest of our page. I'm working on the lettering of the sign now, and I'm using the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pen Cobalt Blue 143, and I'm using this instead of a gel pen because it is a stiffer, finer point, and it is going to go down, not run. I'm able to be very precise. And I'm just going to fill in the areas where there's um, downstrokes, uh, so there's where the color would show, and I'm going to leave the black lines as is. If I had used the blue glaze, um, it would have not been as precise or as crisp as this uh, Pit Artist pen. So, Okay, I'll finish off the word Bluebell Hair Salon and then we'll move on to the windows. Okay, let's uh, tackle some of these bottles. A lot of these don't look like they would be totally see-through, so I'm going to do uh, those first. And I'm going to just start in this bottom corner. Looks like some uh, hair pomade or something. So I'm going to do a black lid. And these are already rounded, so I'm just going to keep that. I'm not going to do anything special to these ones. When there's so many items on a page, sometimes just a flat basic coloring, I guess, is what I would call it, is uh, sometimes uh, sufficient just to get a few of the items done. You can always make it a little darker on the sides to keep the rounded. And if we want to come in with a little bit of white in the center, that's fine just to kind of smooth it out. This again is the Eliz Alizarin Crimson and it's 226 and these are just my polychromos pencils. And this is the Derwent Chinese White and I just have it handy always on my desk so when I go to grab a white for blending that's usually the one I grab. Now these ones here look a little bit different I'm not sure they look a little bit fancier, so might 
bring in some kind of metallic gel pen for that. It looks like some kind of fancy lid. They must be standing on their side or something. Trivia question number four. What famous designer is the daughter of Paul McCartney? And I have no idea. Paul McCartney's daughter's name is Stella McCartney. I'm only grabbing this color because I used it on the doorknob area. So it's not totally new to the page, but it's also not a color that I've used a lot of. And then I'm going to grab a Jelly Roll Metallic in pink. And I probably should wait for the bronze to dry before putting on this, but we'll leave that to dry before I complete the outer edge. This bronze color here. And we'll let that dry before completing that edge. I find that um, the jelly rolls are great uh, and the unibolas are great, but because they have the large ink flow coming out of them, I do, uh, they will run into other things if I don't leave them dry first. Okay, so let's just move up the page a little bit or the next shelf. And these do look to me like they could be a little bit more see-through. So I'm going to, I want the edges of the um, the cap still to show through. So I think that I want to do a lighter color. I'm just going to grab a lighter blue that I haven't used yet. So this is sky blue 146 and it's just a bit lighter than the blue I have been using. And you can still see the black lines for the cap through that blue. So that's what I'm looking for. Now the rest of this is going to be, so this glaze pen is a lighter blue than the darker blue I have been using. So let's see how that looks. Pictures of the trivia cards will be at the end of this video. I figure all of the products inside the store don't necessarily have the same color scheme as the outside, but we don't want it to be shockingly different either. So that's how that's gonna look. I'm gonna leave the label to be a solid color. So we'll just put the glaze pen on the top and bottom. I'm gonna do the tops of this. We're gonna also do the bottom of this and we're gonna leave the labels and we're gonna come in with the, cause I'm assuming this is all one brand of hair product, so, and they're all grouped together. Trivia card three, question one. Who is Siddhartha Gautama, more commonly known as? So this is the black pit pen. Siddhartha Gautama is more commonly known as Buddha. And I definitely did not know that. Oh, and see, I smudged. This is my problem. So after I told you I need to leave this area dry, I actually smudged it with the uh, side of my hand. So in order to clean that up, I used a, a little bit of a water brush and I just kind of scrubbed lightly and then I dabbed it off with the tissue. So uh, yeah, note to self, put gel pen down, walk away. Okay. I'm going to let this area dry and uh, move down the page to this window here. And this window here has a bunch of spray bottles that are see-through because you can see the uh, uh, part of the spray nozzle dangling down inside. So I'm going to make sure that I use something that is going to be um, not move once it's put down. So I'm just going to use a pit pen which has pigment ink so it will not react. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to pick uh, this is a uh, 
sage colored green color for uh, it's a glaze pen. I also have a clear glaze. I want to go over this and see how it does with the black line that is already on the illustrations and it's still showing so I am going to use it on this one here. I'm just going to give this another second though to dry before putting that down. This one is dried enough. I'm going to... Question two. Which string is the thickest string also known as the top string of a guitar? And I have no idea. And the answer is E. Now this one I'm going to do clear. And so I have a clear jelly roll uh, glaze and I don't use it often. So I'll get it going and then if I don't like it, I can always come in with just some uh, glossy accents. I find the clear isn't as um, satisfying as the other ones. So well, it is there. Okay, we're going to let those dry. Okay, so we'll finish off this area here. Now this has got clear on it and it's just um, kind of bland. So I'm going to bring in my Stardust Clear and just add a little bit of a shine to just the edge of both sides. And that just adds a little bit of sparkle to that clear because yeah, the I find the clear um, glaze is just Totally bland and so these two bottles down here I have used the red glaze and now I'm going to use the stardust clear on the outside of the bottle and that'll give it a shine and the stardust clear um, just has some silver sparkle in it so even though it is also clear you definitely can see it more so that's how that is going. I have added the blue the same as up here because they are similar shaped bottles and I just thought that that would be fine. I'm going to use some gray to do the nozzles and then the clear caps will be in the Stardust Clear. I have finished off a couple of items up here. I added some green glaze to these two green areas um, to kind of balance off the green that's down here. And just trying to keep the page uh, unified with the color palette that I have, um, but still uh, balanced on the page if that makes we sense. I still haven't done this face, but uh, I'll do that off camera. And I have also decided on the both the Jelly Roll for the uh, light pink area and the Magenta 133 for the dark. So all the swirls that have two swirl patterns together, I'm doing that with. So that will uh, tie in the rest of the page. So I will uh, do a little bit more with you here, then I will zoom out. We'll take a last look at how this page is shaping up and I'll leave you for the rest of today so you can get on with your own day. All right, let's finish off uh, these bottles here. We could go with a darker blue. That would be this guy here. Trivia three. What composer wrote the piano piece Fieu Elise? I was thinking of the Stardust. I did put Stardust Clear in this label area there. The answer to question three was Beethoven. And again, I did not get that correct. And our last trivia question is, in which ocean can you find the Bermuda Triangle? I want to thank you for tuning in today and to this uh, series. I hope you're enjoying a more relaxed approach to Christmas coloring. And I hope that whatever coloring you're doing, you had some fun today doing it. I hope to see many people's spooky
pages on Instagram and it's been fun seeing them this week. The, gel, the clear here. Question four answer, the Atlantic Ocean. Gives it a bit of shine and uh, texture to the page without having to have a bunch of more color. I will probably deepen up the shadows under the um, windows and uh, keep working on this. This will probably take me another day and uh, hopefully let me just zoom you out. Okay, here is a quick look at where we are going to leave this page. Still got more to do, um, but it's coming along and I think that uh, I'm happy with where it's going as long as I uh, do stuff and walk away. Um, this page has taken quite a while because I've had to put down gel pen or glaze and then leave it and walk away before I continue to smear it. Again, I used palette 15 today and uh, I think that it was a fun palette uh, and offered me just enough variety to make all of the items on here come together. So thank you so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments below how you did today on today's trivia. I hope you had some fun today and I hope you have a creative and colorful week. And I'll see you back here Friday, probably for Flag Friday, or if not, definitely for Sunday. All right, take care, my friends. Bye-bye.